travel, as depicted by the Great Western Railway. Float upon ethereal tides, St. Paul's above the city rides. London Pride. Great Western Railway, inquire for cheap ticket facilities. Heart of the Empire. Great Western Railways, inquire for cheap travel facilities. Through the window, the Cornish Riviera route. I've been waiting for that. Mm. The journey of 305 miles from Paddington to Penzance is much more than a means to an end. It is an experience thoroughly worthwhile for its own sake. Mm, I feel that's true. Paddington Station is London's great gateway to the west. Fascination of travel begins in the moment of the rise of the community. Public relations might seem like a modern concept, but it's actually nothing new. And of the four mainline railway companies formed in 1923, the Great Western Railway led the way in this field. The Great Western was a railway with a family atmosphere, a paternalistic employer also viewed with affection by its customers. It had a long-standing reputation for safety and reliability, stretching back to the days of Brunel. Unlike the other railway companies who enlisted the help of characters such as Sunny South Sam or the Jolly Fisherman, the GWR invoked nothing less than the deity. The GWR, God's Wonderful Railway. Unlike the London, Midland and Scottish Railway, for example, which covered an area of heavy industry, the GWR's territory was largely rural. Although it swallowed up the small railways which served the coal fields and dockyards of South Wales, the Great Western didn't want industry to be part of its image of the West of Britain. The coastlines and mountains of Wales were the order of the day. Barry for varied enjoyment. Cricket, Carnarvonshire resort facing south, ideal summer and winter climate. Miles of glorious sands. It wasn't just the railway's geography, but the way in which it was exploited that helped to give the Great Western its special character. The Great Western had, for many years, been a prodigious publisher of guidebooks starting with the Cornish Riviera in 1904 and Holiday Haunts in 1906. The company promoted its association with Britain's heritage with the publication of books such as cathedrals, abbeys and castles. The GWR took upon itself the role of educating the travelling public and presenting the historic face of Britain. Taunton, Somerset's historical county town set in the lovely vale of Taunton Dean. Plymouth, the spirit of Drake lives on. Historic Bath. Health-giving springs. Entertainment. While GWR books were increasing in popularity, Great Western posters were not particularly well thought of. Both the Paddington headquarters and the local councils, who shared the cost of some posters, were conservative in their artistic taste. They held a very traditional view of this England of ours. 
But spurred on by the competition, celebrated poster artists such as Frank Newbold began to be given commissions in the 1930s. A series of posters was even commissioned from the leading avant-garde artist, McKnight Kaufer, whose striking designs were so well employed by the London underground. But then strict instructions were issued that his bold ideas had to be modified to suit the rather more conservative tastes of the Great Western Railway Company. Gay, friendly Western Supermare welcoming all its visitors and proud to be known as the largest holiday resort between Lancashire and Land's End is frankly delighted to be a popular holiday town. Haunts and hints for anglers. Looks like he could do the hint or two. The GWR liked nothing better than a good guidebook to encourage their customers, but it wasn't all healthy hikes. Gooey! Michael! The summer of 29 on the English Riviera, courtesy of the GWR. The GWR did make occasional attempts to modernise its image. In the early 1930s, a new rounded monogram was introduced. The aim was to make great Western publicity instantly recognisable. Though at the same time, the company still made much of its origins, such as Brunel's famous link between Glorious Devon and the Cornish Riviera. Cornwall is recognised as an area where visitors may be reasonably assured they will escape the... Hmm, fresh sea air. The Cornish Riviera was a land where the sun always shone, but never proved harmful, where it was always warm, but never enervating, where we could bathe in the sea without a thought for sewage outfalls, where fishermen just fished without a care for EEC regulations. Perhaps it was a land that never existed, but at the time it seemed like a land without end. The Great Western issued catalogues of their publications entitled The Literature of Locomotion. The traveller and the literary man have always had much in common. It would be hard to say whether travel or literature has derived most benefit from their constant association. This may have sounded pompous to other railway companies, but although GWR posters were not so highly respected, no other company achieved the output or quality of GWR publications which by 1947 had sold in their millions. In other fields too, the GWR put quality above profit, recognising the long-term benefit to the company of such subtle forms of advertising. Also found in the literature of locomotion were details of jigsaw puzzles. 44 in all were produced between 1924 and 1937. They helped keep many children amused while quietly cultivating future customers. And other GWR products helped to keep the adults quiet. GWR assorted biscuits and GWR beer helped to while away the journey westwards. But as with all four of the railway companies, the war brought to an end the summers spent in sunny Somerset and glorious Devon. For the next six years, the Cornish Riviera was destined to remain just a, a fond memory of happier days. But thanks to its books and posters, the Great Western has given us a picture of what it was like to explore the holiday haunts in the West Country between the wars. The broad county of Devon, glorious alike in song and in history, was the home of the great sea rovers of Elizabeth's time. <laughs>